So this is Matt from tracymatt.co.uk and from unboxings.com. Here I have the Samsung Omnia HD, which is obviously a much talked about handset. Um, this one is uh, actually an import, so that the box design is a little unusual and uh, obviously in, uh, uh, I think in French there by the looks of it. Uh, regular sort of box design, pretty typical Samsung stuff. Um, user manual right on top and uh, screen protector and a warranty card and that sort of thing. Fairly lightweight manual again. Then we have the handset itself, which we're going to come back to in just a second. We have a battery, which is a 1500 milliamp hour battery. It's uh, fairly large, um, although quite thin and uh, quite weighty. We then have a charger, which is a uh, micro USB on one end and obviously a regular charger on the other. This one is a European style wall charger. We then have USB sync charge cable, you can have your computer, so it's a standard USB to micro USB sync charge cable. Then we have headset, uh, unlike the headset that we saw with um, say the Samsung Jet, this is actually a fully wired headset with a 4 pole 35 mm jack on one end and an integrated push button. Uh, no volume control you'll notice though. So uh, we don't actually have uh, like a media control or anything like that. But we do have a microphone a little bit further up in a small block. So have the push button, have the microphone, and then we have the actual headphones themselves. The headphones um, are pretty good, they're in-ear style, uh, quite neat, and uh, they're fairly weighty, so magnets in them must be fairly good. Um, so that's uh, the head headset. You are pretty much um, forced to use this headset if you want to use uh, as a microphone and a tip, yeah, actually as a headset, unlike uh, other Samsungs where we have uh, an inline microphone with its own socket. Um, this is all fully wired, so you can use your own headphones if you are happy just to use them as headphones, but if you want to use a headset, you have to use the one supplied. Um, that's pretty much it for uh, what we have in the box in actual fact. And uh, let's move on to the actual handset. Now, the thing that strikes me immediately about the handset is it's pretty big. Um, I'd say it's probably a little bit larger than the HTC Touch HD. Um, and I think other people will make obvious comparisons perhaps to uh, the iPhone. So, uh, comparison to the iPhone 3G there, um, we are a bit longer or taller. And, uh, well, perhaps a little narrower but certainly thicker and chunkier um, and the fact that the sides are so so square, square at top or bottom and fairly square at the sides um, it does feel a quite chunky handset I have to be honest it's uh, certainly going to make a, an impression on your back pocket if you put it in your back pocket but uh, let's uh, peel all these other bits and pieces off and we'll take a look around the handset. So I have a forward facing VJ camera which we can use for video conferencing. The screen then is actually 3.7 inch diagonal, quite large. Um, it actually, uh, the handset is larger than you would expect for a 3.7 inch diagonal display. Um, and what I mean by that is if we take the, um, say the Toshiba 2G01 which has a 4.1 inch display, uh, physically isn't uh, a great deal different, uh, different to that, but uh, uh, the display at 3.7 inch um, does come in quite a large package. Below that we have our phone keys for send and end and uh, answer and release calls and then a me uh, menu button in the center. Everything is obviously touch screen. Down on the left hand side then we have an up down volume control rocker and then a slot under a cover which is the micro SD card slot. And that pops up, pops goes there. Nothing really to speak of on the bottom. It does look like a grill on the bottom, but it is just a design. It's not actually a speaker grill. Um, I think the loudspeaker might be just in the centre, and certainly on the other end there is one. But uh, it is just a design on the bottom. It's not a complete grill. Microphone's just here. There is a button there for the camera, dedicated camera button, and the soft key just above. And uh, behind this cover, we have that micro USB connector for sync and charge. Uh, on the top, we have another cover, which this time is over the 3.5mm headphone jack, so we can plug in our headset or in, use it to plug in our own headphones. 
again pretty cool. On the back we actually have an 8 megapixel autofocus camera, we have a flash on the back. We don't have a mirror for taking self-portraits but the back is actually an extremely shiny, almost piano black um, case so if you wanted to take pictures of yourself you probably could do, as you can see you could probably see more reflection in the back there. So you could use uh, it to take pictures of yourself. Back cover slides off like so. SIM card goes in space just here and the battery pops in position like so on the back like that. And uh, let's just uh, power up. So there we go, Samsung Player HD initially on the screen. 123 millimeters from top to bottom, 58 millimeters wide and uh, 13 millimeters thick. Weighs 149 grams, but I have to say it does seem um, heavier than that when it's in your hand, possibly due to its size. Uh, the network then is quad band and WCDMA dry band, HSDPA up to uh, HSDPA up 7.2 megabits per second, and HSUPA up to 5.76. Say 8 megapixel camera with digital zoom and LED flash, image stabilizer, smile shutter, face detection, blink detection, and uh, geotagging. HD recording up to 24 frames per second and supports DivX, XVID, 3GP, and the like. Music, MP3, FM radio with RDS, does have a built-in FM transmitter which is quite cool for using it in car. Dual stereo speakers, one at the top, one at the bottom, or one at the top, one at the bottom. Um, obviously podcast downloads and other bits and pieces all supported by the uh, operating system itself. Uh, email supports POP3, SMTP, IMAP4 and Microsoft Exchange. Instant messaging with MSN. 8 gigabytes of internal memory, but we can supplement that with up to 16 gig of micro SDHD memory card. We have uh, hands-free, voice dialing, and the connectivity, as I mentioned, is micro USB. We have Bluetooth 2 with A2DP support. Wi-Fi is supported, 802.11 BNG. Um, we also have uh, features for HDMI TV out through, with uh, an appropriate connector cable. Uh, where that plugs in, I'm not sure whether it will actually plug into the um, USB there or to the headphone socket at the top uh, with a special cable or connector, but uh, in the specification we do list HDMI TV out um, as a feature. Built-in GPS is a GPS chipset. We support uh, Microsoft Office documents with a document viewer and widget support and video editing and so on. So that pretty much covers the specification. As you can see, the screen is uh, pretty similar uh, to other Samsung handsets with uh, the standardized uh, OS that they have. Samsung have once again put a fairly decent touch screen display on there and uh, fairly, fairly sensitive. So we have our dialer, which uh, again is extremely touch sensitive, requiring only a fairly slight touch there. And uh, then we have our contacts. Again, obviously nothing uh, on there just at the moment. Messaging actually wants me to rotate the screen, that's interesting. New messages, inbox, mailbox, sent items and so on. All standard there. And we have our main menu, so we have things like contacts, uh, messaging, camera, real player, settings, applications and so on. So we can go to settings. And we've got personal phone, application manager, calling and so on. And uh, we have real player for streaming, actually. Uh, I've actually managed to launch the camera, so the camera application there on screen and uh, actually sounds like the camera was working quite hard there with autofocus so you could actually hear uh, inside something going on. Okay so then we have our web browser and then we have uh, office documents and go back into options, we can change our view. What's fairly hard to um, explain is uh, the items here, the orange parts, and certainly the color, the brightly colored uh, areas on the screen, uh, almost stand out away from the rest of the screen, uh, almost with a 3D effect. It's quite difficult to, uh, obviously you're not going to really see it on a, on a camera with just one lens, but um, certainly the colored images, the colored parts of the images really seem to stand out. Um, it's an interesting thing, it's not something I've really noticed before, but they do just actually seem to stand forward from the rest of the display. So that's pretty cool. Um, and the same here, we actually this coloured bar actually seems to stand away from the rest of the screen. So it's quite cool. So if we come out of there, 
We have our widgets down the side. Again, pretty standard uh, widgets. They have YouTube, we have a Bluetooth um, camera, uh, calendar, and uh, we have a calculator, uh, fun club, voice recording, games, Facebook application, AccuWeather, uh, other bits and pieces all the way down the side there. All fairly standard stuff, so it's all quite cool. Quite an impressive display. We can unlock the screen and we can unlock the screen. And uh, menu button in the middle brings up the menu items. And then we can go into settings. And uh, we can go into connectivity. And it's in here that we can set up wireless LAN, network, USB. Uh, and all the other bits and pieces. So I know that's just a very quick uh, look at the handset and uh, of the OS itself, but we'll cover that in more detail when it comes to the actual full review, which will be online in the next couple of weeks on tracymac.co.uk. Um, but if you're a fan of our unboxing videos, why not check out the others that we have on unboxings.com.